Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, let's talk about motion on an incline and how gravity uh, leads to acceleration down the incline. So if I have an incline that looks like this, and this is the incline angle theta, and I put some sort of box on this surface, and let's say the surface is frictionless, then we know what's going to happen, right? The box is going to slide down the incline, and it's going to slide with some acceleration A. Now, we don't know exactly what that acceleration is, but we do know if that box had fallen straight down, it would accelerate with G. This looks like a vector. And I can draw that vector as the sum of two other vectors. So one of those vectors could be this one, and the other vector could be this one. Now, if this is a right triangle, and this is my angle theta, then this side of the triangle is G sine theta. The other side is, of course, G cosine theta. So what is the acceleration down the incline? The acceleration down the incline is equal to g sine theta. You can prove this to yourself using a little bit of geometry, but you can also prove it to yourself just by looking at the limits. If theta goes to zero, then this is a horizontal surface, and there should be no movement horizontally. There should be no acceleration horizontally. Sine of zero, in fact, goes to zero. And so that tells you that this acceleration has to be g sine theta, not g cosine theta, because cosine of zero, in fact, goes to one. All right, so if that's the acceleration down the incline, then, for instance, if we have a soapbox derby racer, and it is on an incline of 13 degrees, then the maximum acceleration it could have is g sine of 13 degrees. And so we can plug in those numbers. We know g is 9.8 meters per second squared. We plug in sine of 13 degrees to our calculator. And when I do that, I get 2.2 meters per second squared. Okay? Now, let's say we go down this run for a while, and we want to calculate the maximum speed that we can attain. And let's say we know how long the run is. So, if this distance here that it goes down the run is x, let's just call it x final, then we have uh, some equations that tell us about what the maximum speed is going to be. And those are our kinematic equations, and one of those equations looks like this. Vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a x final minus x initial. And now if it starts from rest at the top, then that is zero. And we can start our measuring stick from the top. So that is zero. And so we just get Vf equals 2axf. And we can take the square root of that. And now if xf is some distance, say, 55 feet, then we can plug in all those numbers, except feet is not really SI units, and so we have to convert that to meters, and the conversion factor is 0 0.3048 meters per foot. And if you do that, you get 16.76 meters. Okay, and so now let's plug all that into here. We have 2, we have 9.8, 
we have XF, which is 16.76. We're going to multiply all those. We're going to take the square root of it. And when you're done, you get a number that looks like 8.6 meters per second. Okay? Hopefully that is clear. If not, come see me in my office. Cheers.